Hey friends, this is Jesse from Capital Painting Company. Uh, today I'm going to be uh, spraying doors and millwork. Uh, and I just wanted to take the opportunity to kind of share uh, the process of how I do that uh, for all of you DIYs out there and for other painting contractors. Just to show you a real simple, basic way uh, to not have any runs on your doors or to not have any imperfections. Uh, when spraying millwork and doors, it's a very fine finish. Uh, and so, why don't you follow me and I'll show you that process. So, I always set up an area to where I can clean off all the doors, do any sanding. Sometimes there are cracks in your panels, um, so I can caulk those panels uh, in a nice area without making my spray booth uh, dirty with any type of debris. It's really important when you're spraying that you're not spraying around a bunch of loose debris and so I try to take any type of opportunity uh, to clean outside of my spray booth um, just so we don't get any dust particles on our finish here. So I always, with taking apart doors, I carry a five gallon bucket with me. I'll put several different types of hardware in there for closets and other types of things like that. I carry a damp rag with me, but before I wipe it down with a damp rag, I use a broom here. Uh, it's really good. You can even use a paintbrush uh, to really get out some of these areas in here, uh, just to remove any of that dust and um, dusty crap that's kind of building up on top of the doors. Um, once you have wiped down all of your doors and done all of your sanding, you're ready to start masking them. I'll go ahead and just mask them out here. It's easier to mask them. Uh, standing straight up then laying flat on our saw horses and you'll see in a second here. Um, this is frog tape. We'll use frog tape on all of our doors and I don't use paper. I'll just wrap it around with inch and a half white tape. Um, but at your leisure, feel whatever you want to use as far as this with masking them. You just want to make sure that your masking is tight uh, and that you don't have any loose areas to where that spray finish is going to get on any of your hinges or your door hardware. Um, the specific type of caulk, I'll just use, you know, basically any caulk. Um, it's an interior. Caulking is just going to be great. It doesn't really matter what type of product you're using for an interior. It's not really going to experience all the type of weather or elements um, that it does uh, working on an exterior. So if you follow me, I'll show you on how to do uh, the spring and how I set it up uh, very strategically. This is the finished coat that I like to use. Uh, I will only use this specific product when it comes to spraying any type of millwork or doors. The reason being is, is that every other product that I've ever used has always been a pain in the neck with adhesion and proper uh, cure time for uh, dings, scratches, fingernail marks, um, when you're cleaning baseboards, you know, um, mopping or even vacuuming. Um, you want to make sure that you're using a product that's going to be more resistant towards scratches and dings and stuff like that. And so this product has a self-leveling technology in it, which is really awesome. Uh, it makes it where if you have to do any hand painting, uh, your brushwork, as long as you have really nice brushwork and you're laying it down with the proper millage, uh, you won't have so many imperfections with brush strokes. We don't have to worry about that today. Um, I'm not doing any brushing. Um, later I might make a video on how to brush with this product, uh, but for today, I'm just gonna show you a quick tutorial on how to spray out these doors. Ideally, this is not an area that you wanna be in, but the house is very small. It's an 800 square foot house. Um, I have another video where we're in a three car garage. We made a huge spray booth. That was a great ideal situation that you wanna be in. Normally when you're spraying doors, you wanna have as much space uh, to be able to work with. That way you're not creating any obstacles for yourself. It goes really smoothly. So I'm gonna show you how to spray these doors. It's very important. I like to wear a sweatshirt and a spray sock as I'm doing everything. And so that way I'm not getting a bunch of overspray on me. This product is really, really dirty. Uh, and it, not really dirty, but uh, it, it, it's very, very difficult to get off when you're using hot water. So uh, I'll spray with gloves on just to make sure that I'm not getting any spray uh, on my hands. Put on my spray sock. Bleh. 
And you don't have to go through, again, it's really at your leisure. This is just what I prefer to use as a contractor. You don't have to go the big shebang and everything and look like a super fancy race car driver. But uh, I just like to cover as much areas as possible. I also do estimates. And so if your contractors are out doing estimates later, it's always nice to do estimates with a nice clean look. Your first impression is really important. So I usually carry, uh, right now I'm using a fine finish, low pressure tip with a great coat, uh, 495 sprayer. Uh, the tip I'm using, the tip I'm using is going to be a 310 FFLP, fine finish, low pressure. I got my pump here cranking at about half the capacity of what it can spray. So you're going to see a nice, slow consistency. Um, the way I'm going to spray these, ideally, again, if I've got a nice big open space, normally I'll have a gap between every door. Uh, I don't get that uh, privilege today. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to spray this portion of doors halfway, reaching as far as I can, go around the other side, uh, and then spray the other half. So um, I'll kind of show you on how the amount of distance I use between the doors, how the spray goes on, uh, what the angle that you have there. I'm actually going to try to do it closer so that way you guys can really see, see the spray. these angles here. These angles can always be very, very rough on you. There's a couple ways that you can spray them. One, you can spray them like this and follow the bottom edge of your fan. The next way is you can spray it sideways and just do these dabbles. I don't like to do that because every time you spray it might spit on you. Um, so the lower pressure that you have for these tips the less likely it's going to spit paint. Sometimes what I'll do is also is I will use the daylight to kind of take a look at the angle to see if I have any holidays. And so I actually created two holiday areas here that you will sometimes either miss an entire spot or you'll have a holiday in the middle of your panel there. The best way to find your holidays is to look down at your doors and look at an angle to where you won't have any imperfections on your first coat. So let's fix those holidays. Now sometimes when you fix this holiday here, you can create a flash depending on how long it's been drying.
So that's how you do doors. And whenever you're doing them, it's really important that you take your time when you're laying down a finished coating or a fine finish. It's not about how fast you can get it done. If you're under a time uh, pressure, I definitely can understand that. You can uh, crank them out and crank up the pressure, spray them out a little bit faster, but you're running higher of a risk of getting sags too thick of a uh, finish coating on there and what that will do is it'll actually round off the areas for your corners and everything and You don't want to have that you want to try to keep the nice 90 degree angles on these doors as possible and so um, That's pretty much the basics uh, the reason why I lay them on saw horses like this is I don't like to take any risk uh, For runs or anything like that. So you can't help it if you're doing window trim um, because you know it's on the wall um, you want to try to reduce the amount of risk for sags as possible. So when you have them on a sawhorse like this, uh, you don't really run any chances of it sagging on you. Um, so we, I actually let these guys dry uh, overnight and then tomorrow I'll come by and I'm going to flip them over and spray the other side. Um, I, I try to normally do the back sides of anything first. And then I'll flip them over and do the finish coating on my front sides last uh, if you're trying to do like kitchen cabinets or anything like that. So uh, I hope that you guys found this video to be very useful and helpful for anybody that's trying to tackle on this type of project. If you guys have more questions, uh, give me a shout out, leave something in the comments. Um, and uh, my name is Jesse. Again, I'm at Capital Painting Company. I'll see you guys out there until next time.